Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of October 5th, 2017. I'm City Councilor Bill Dwight, uh, and I will be presiding tonight. Um, and as is our custom, we invite the public to speak before we convene and before we determine a quorum. And uh, we ask when you speak, you simply step up, state your name, your address for the public record. Uh, keep your comments within three minutes. Um, three minutes of the deadline, you'll see a, well, maybe you won't see, because John's having a little problem logging on, but there, there'll be a three minute timer. Um, and we ask that you uh, keep your remarks civil. You are allowed to uh, comment on us by name because we're public figures, but anyone else who doesn't qualify as a public figure, for instance, if your neighbor annoys you, I'd, please don't mention them by name. Um, it's only fair, they are not public figures while they may be annoying, I don't know. Um, and also the other th uh, rules constrain us from speaking because this is your time to speak, not ours. We will do plenty of talking after, after we convene. So this is your moment. All that said, with, that, with those caveats and invitations, we will start with Alan Verson. Hello, my name is Alan Burson. I live at 508 <coughs> Kennedy Road in Leeds. Um, the meeting before last, you voted to reappoint me to the planning board after a considerable amount of discussion. I want to say I was impressed and very pleased at the thoughtfulness that I saw uh, in the discussion. I think you took it seriously, not about me, but about the issues that were raised, and I thank you for that. I also want to thank the mayor, who was considerate enough to call me, I think the next morning, leave me a message telling me what happened, because, of course, I had no idea that my name was going to be discussed um, at the city council meeting, and I, he didn't want me to read about it for the first time in the paper, which would have made me shocked and angry. Um, so thank you, mayor. On the other side of the coin, however, um, I think there were serious issues raised by the type of objections that were raised to my reappointment. There was no allegation that I was disruptive in the planning board or failed <coughs> to participate or had a negative impact at all. It was really a matter of what my opinions were. The point was that my opinions did not align closely enough with the two counselors who objected so that disqualified me from serving on the planning board. Councillor O'Donnell didn't like the questions that I raised about a <coughs> amendment to the zoning ordinance that had a lot of discussion at the planning board. Councillor Klein, <coughs> excuse me, I believe disagreed with um, the fact that after the episode in Ferguson, Missouri, when she made some very strong statements about her opinion, and I emailed her disagreeing with those opinions. So in both cases, it was my opinions that disqualified me from being on the board. So I think this is a very slippery slope and raises serious issues. Councillor Murphy and Dwight both strokes, spoke strongly about the need for diversity of opinions, and I applaud that. So did the mayor, actually. The three of you talked strongly about the need for diversity. Um, this is critical because if only people who agree with each other are on city boards or participate in public discussion, um, then, um, then best case those boards or that public discussion will be sterile and boring and lacking in critical thinking. And worst case, um, I think it would lead to a repressive atmosphere where only politically correct opinions are welcomed, and hopefully none of us want that. Last, um, Councillor Dwight, in speaking for diversity, mentioned in passing that he didn't think I was a member of his fan group, which may or may not be true depending on the day of the week or the issue, but I can say that based on how often my daughter-in-law and my grandson are at the pie bar, we're pretty good supporters. <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Adele Franks, please. 
Adele Franks. I live on Black Birch Trail. Can you? That's good, Adele. Yeah, you'll be fine. Your the mic's fine. Yeah. Oh, good. So uh, Sharon and I just came from a Heat Smart volunteer meeting. We, uh, as members of Climate Action Now, are volunteering uh, to help the city with their with the Heat Smart program. And so I thought, since we we're coming to the city council meeting, we would make sure that you all uh, are familiar with the Heat Smart program. And you all are familiar with the Heat Smart program, and people in TV land are familiar with the Heat Smart program because it's a really wonderful program. And uh, what it is is an opportunity to upgrade your heating system to a very energy efficient heating system. The state is very concerned now about reducing greenhouse gases, and so is giving really very generous rebates for people who switch over to air source heat pumps for heating and cooling. And the city has been, uh, has gotten a, a grant and has arranged for an installer who's giving a discount on top of that. So it's a really good time to switch over, especially if you've got oil heat or um, electric baseboard heat, you would uh, lower your costs <coughs> and get cooling on, as well as heating. So it's a really wonderful program. And I hope that uh, you'll all take some of these and share them with your neighbors. And you can find out more at, um, smartnorthhampton.org. Thank you very much, Adele. You're welcome. Is anybody interested out in the audience in having one of these? Now, I, I have no one else signed up. <laughs> uh, would anyone else like to speak in public comment at this point? Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask the administrative assistant <coughs> interim interim. <laughs> oh, that's just way too much. I'm going to ask John to call the roll, please. Councillor Bidwell. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Here. Councillor Klein. Councillor LaBarge. Present. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. Councillor Shaw. Here. Uh, Councillor Klein is absent uh, with notice. She's uh, currently experiencing some medical issues and she, will, she sends her regrets and hopes to be joining us again soon. First up, um, we have a poll petition hearing from uh, uh, for National Grid's Woodmont Road, and this is a public hearing that's continued from the previous meeting, and I'll accept the motion to open. Yes. That motion. Second. All those in favor of opening the reopening the public hearing, please aye. indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. So uh, first off, we'll start with the proponents, and Bonnie is here tonight to uh, in, uh, reference in, representing National Grid. Hello, Bonnie Brown, National Grid. Um, we are um, proposing to set a pole 150 feet northwest of Pole 9 on Woodmont Street. It would be a SO, solely owned pole by the electric company, in order for, I think it's Northern Construction, to run a, t a service to a pedestal to serve a light on the underpass for the <coughs> bike path. Uh, any questions from, the, well, actually, we'll wait until the, we close the public hearing, but uh, um, are there any opponents or people wishing to speak on this matter? Your Honor? He <laughs> <laughs> sees. So the, the, the mayor is, <laughs> should be noted, the mayor is a little anxious waiting for the tunnel to open, and, and the community is anxious, so. I'll accept the motion to close the public hearing. Second it. Uh, all those in favor, uh, we have a, a first and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Does anyone have any questions of Bonnie on this issue? Uh, Councilor Nash. Yes. Um, so um, I've ridden, ridden past the bike tunnel a few times, and um, so there's a, there's a light there, a, a new lamp. Is that the lamp that's going to get power, or is there going to be an additional lamp going in on the street there? It looks like that. Well, there will not be a light set on the pole. The pole is simply to bring electric to the pedestal, and then I, I'm not sure if Northern is putting light in, in the tunnel or just on either side of it. Okay, so there won't be an additional light on any of the poles there. No. It's just really for lighting the tunnel. Yes. Right, thank you. You're welcome. As I understand, this is to just deliver power service to the tunnel and whatever facilities they plan on installing, and I believe one includes a camera. And, uh, and the light was my understanding. Any other questions? Thank you, Bonnie. I hope that was painless for you. <laughs> so, um, 
So next up, we also have, uh, this is item 17.380. This is a poll petition received from National Grid for Grove Avenue. And this is an announcement of a public hearing. This is not a public hearing in and of itself. In accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws, a public hearing will be held <coughs> October 19th, 2017, in these chambers, uh, 212 Main Street, regarding the petition of National Grid to erect poles, wires upon, along, under, or across one or more public ways. Um, so mark your calendars, and maybe we'll see you again, Bonnie, if that, that means so. Um, and there's also an announcement of a public hearing regarding the FY 2018 pa uh, tax levy. Uh, the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, again, October 19, 2017, at 7.05 p.m. here in Council Chambers at 212 Main Street, Northampton, Massachusetts, to discuss the percentages of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real and personal property within the city of Northampton for FY 2018 in accordance with Chapter 40, Section 56 of the Massachusetts General Laws. Informa information regarding this issue will be available for public inspection in the city clerk's office on or before October 17th of 2017 after 12 p.m. Now we come up to uh, recognition and one minute announcements by councilors. Councilor LaBarge. Thank you. Um, I just want to announce that Conservation Commission has scheduled um, the Pioneer Valley Wagon Trails Dog Park. The date is October 12th. The time is at 5.35 p.m. The place is at City Hall, second floor, hearing room. Planning board meeting, October 12th, the same day, we are the first ones on the agenda. The time, 7 o'clock p.m. Sarah Schatz, who is the owner and is in the process of buying possibly 38 to 40 something acres on Glendale Road, has been working tirelessly with me on what residents' concerns are. We started walking Glendale Road on Wednesday afternoon and for the rest of the three days next week. I am highly urging the residents on Glendale Road, Brisson, and Park Hill Road extension to attend these meetings, along with many residents in this city to come and voice support for this to happen. It is the state of the art. It will be a heaven for all dogs in our city. Thank you. Any other announcements? Council Goodwin? Uh, yes, I'd like to announce that on Monday, October 16th at 7 o'clock in the evening at the Northampton Senior Center will be a presentation by uh, Dr. Roger Kliegler. The, his presentation will be Death with Dignity. The doctor fights for his or our last rights. He is a proponent of the End of Life Options Act that is pending before the legislature. And I'm told he's a very compelling speaker. He is terminally ill himself. He's fighting for his own right to have physician assistance as he chooses on his terms to end his life. Um, and that uh, presentation uh, will be will, sponsored by Northampton neighbors, among others, will be taking place three days before a council meeting our next council meeting, at which I expect we will be uh, reviewing a, a, a resolution uh, that would propose that our city council be in support of this pending act in the legislature as well. Very good, thank you. Um, anyone else? Um, I, the... Oh, one more. Oh, Councilor yeah. Nash. So um, I, I just uh, want to um, announce that the, um, the Bridge Street Bridge Street School walking school bus had its first trial run on Wednesday. It was a big success. Um, we are still looking for volunteers. <coughs> We're also still looking for riders, walkers, for the bus. And um, if you just go to the, um, the Bridge Street School website and click on the PTO page, you can find the sign-up sheet for that. And, um, and we're also looking for, uh, you know, people who represent Bridge Street School to also hop in every so often and help get the word out. So thank you. Uh, I have this from the um, Veterans Council of Northampton. This is the Veterans Day Parade. It will be Saturday, November 11th of 2017. Of, of 2017. Uh, this year's parade will commence from Lampern Park 
and that's near the Bridge Street Cemetery in, by, the, by the Bridge Street School. And all units will form up around 10 a.m. and will step off at 11 a.m. and proceed from Bridge Street to Main Street and will end at Pulaski Park here where the Veterans Day speaking program will take place. <coughs> and they say we earnestly look forward to your continued support in order to make this a successful Veterans Day parade. And then they ask us to fill out the forms here um, and submit them. Um, in the past, they, they still, if we haven't returned these, it's fine. We're still allowed to participate. So, uh, communications from the mayor. Thank you. Good evening, councilors. Um, I'll add one other uh, parade note. Obviously, Monday, this Monday, uh, is the annual Pulaski Day Parade. Uh, which will step off at 11 o'clock uh, off from King Street um, at the former Northampton Honda slash Blyda Ford lot, depending on your, uh, your perspective on it. Uh, and it will obviously proceed through downtown and go to Pulaski Park for the annual uh, Pulaski Day ceremonies that take place in Pulaski Park. So uh, that will be happening on Monday. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just give you an update on, actually, this is something that uh, Councillor LaBarge had requested that I um, provide an update on. You re we recall that earlier this year in April, um, we did the pavement management memo um, when I came before you uh, to, um, to seek capital improvement funds uh, for supplementing our Chapter 90 funds, and we presented um, sort of a list of roadway improvements that we were planning on doing during this construction year. And uh, we're sort of getting to the close of the construction season. And so I wanted to just provide a quick update on some of the projects um, and just kind of, you know, go quickly through uh, where we are in those projects just to give you a sense of it, as well as a couple of others that were kind of at the end of the memo that we're beginning the early work on. Um, one of the first things on the memo is crack sealing. Um, which is an annual um, exercise that actually did go out to bid um, $110,000. Uh, um, and that project was completed in August of this year. You may have seen them out and about um, doing the crack ceiling. Uh, we also did um, some of our um, elementary school and high school parking lots as well, Br uh, Bridge Street, Ryan Road, as well as the Northampton High School. We did crack ceiling uh, working with the maintenance departments of the, of the schools. Um, the next section of the memo was about mill and overlay and microsurfacing. Uh, that w uh, that primarily um, included it was Ryan Road, uh, which some of you who may live out there may have experienced that earlier in the year. Um, that was a about a 772 well 772 thousand dollar contract um, funded by city bond funds 500 thousand and the rest chapter 90. Um, and we basically, you know, did a mill and overlay of Ryan Road from Brookside Circle to 79 feet west of Bird Spirit Road Extension, and then Ryan Road from Florence Road to Brookside Circle microsurfacing. Uh, those were both completed in mid-August before school uh, got started. And then there was a thousand-foot section of Park Hill Road uh, where uh, microsurfacing uh, was completed. Um, if you also were out on uh, Ryan Road, we also, uh, at the same time, a number of the crosswalk uh, uh, ramps were retrofitted to be handicapped accessible all along Ryan Road as part of that same project. So I know that there was a little bit of disruption out there, but I think the finished product now is is worth it. Um, the other uh, item on the um, on the pavement memo was Audubon Road. Uh, this was a um, uh, primarily a water service replacement, um, and we've uh, that was about a nine hundred and fifty eight thousand dollar contract uh, for the paving. Um, but it also included uh, both water and storm water, about almost a half a million dollars in water and about $50,000 in storm water as they were replacing a main water line. We've actually had, we've worked with the residents up there to do uh, shutdowns of their water to do replacement. Um, and then some culverts uh, had to be installed as well. Um, so they're still continuing to finish the, um, the utility work, and we are hoping that that base layer will be completed by the end of this construction season, and then they'll come back in the spring to do a final paving. Um, the other two uh, big projects that were listed on the uh, pavement memo were Day Avenue and North Farms Road. 
Um, Day Avenue, uh, this was sort of a combined contract for both of them. Uh, it was a little over a million dollars uh, total value. That was, par again, partially funded through uh, Chapter 90 as well as our local uh, bond funds. Um, it also included uh, $630,000 of water, uh, $203,000 worth of sewer, and then $100,366 of stormwater, um, basically replacing water mains on both Day Avenue and North Maple and North Farms Road, um, replacing all of the drainage on Day Avenue, and then doing some minor drainage work on North Farms Road. Uh, the sewer mains and services on Day Avenue were replaced. Um, anticipating that the new layer of pavement on Day Avenue will be, uh, base layer will be com completed this construction season, again, having to come back in the spring to do the final uh, layer. Um, and again, similarly, the patching will be done on uh, North Maple and North Farms in spring of 2018. Hinkley Street, uh, if you've driven uh, down Hinkley Street lately, uh, that is a massive project. Uh, the total value of that project is $2.9 million. Um, and again, uh, Chapter 90 is funding about $1.1 million of it. Um, stormwater, uh, if you saw those huge uh, concrete drain lines that were all stacked up uh, waiting for that project. Stormwater on that project was 843,504. Water was 522. Uh, sewer was 298. Sidewalks, 68,000. And then there was actually some traffic calming funds of 4,200. About 60% of the main drain and 70% of the sewer installation is complete. Um, the water main work near Nonatuck will occur later this fall. Um, the new outfall and the two associated retaining walls to the south of Riverside Drive, which go out to the Mill River, um, are being, hopefully will be constructed this fall with some carryover into the spring of 2018. Um, the bulk of the water main construction and sewer will happen in the spring, and we hope that the roadway and sidewalk construction will begin uh, once all that utility work is completed sometime in the spring of 2018. Um, that's a, a huge project, um, and you can kind of see how it, we're marshalling a lot of different resources, uh, both, uh, you know, Chapter 90, uh, local uh, tax dollars that we're bonding, and then obviously <coughs> water, sewer, and stormwater. Then at the, toward the end of the memo, we mentioned that we were doing some survey work uh, this fall, uh, Chesterfield Road. Uh, that's a $7,000 contract, which is funded by Chapter 90. We're doing about 2,600 linear feet uh, of survey work, um, and we're um, anticipating that it, when that survey work is completed, we'll, there'll be some design work done over the winter, um, and we'll be doing um, work on both paving and drainage uh, next year and bringing that forward as part of the capital plan. Uh, the sidewalk inventory that many of you are familiar with, um, that was a that was a sixty-six thousand dollar project, um, and as well as a combination of Chapter Ninety and sidewalk capital funds, um, we hired an outside consultant <coughs> in the city to do this uh, massive survey. Um, they've collected thousands of data points. Um, they're still uh, collating and analyzing that data, and we're hoping to receive from them the final report and a priority list, which is sort of the end product that we're still waiting on, which will help inform our investments in sidewalks over the next uh, several years. Um, Damon Road, uh, that's one that was also referenced in the memo. Uh, this is actually a state project, but the city will be responsible for doing right-of-way acquisition, um, and we will also be doing some, uh, some water, sewer, and stormwater work as part of that project. Um, that is on the state tip. Um, but the first step is to do all the right of way. You can remember, Councillor, on Route 66, a big part of the project was first getting all the right of way so the state could actually do its construction. So it's going to be a, a big process to do that. Um, Burt's Pit Road, uh, which was the other one mentioned on the um, pavement memo, um, where we uh, had funding in that uh, for survey work. So a contract was just awarded for $45,000 to do um, all of the um, survey work of the full length of Burt's Pit Road, which is kind of the first step um, in coming up with a design. Um, we're waiting for MassDOT to approve that contract, but that work should begin this fall. Um, and then we're gonna be working over the winter um, to do the design work on that once the surveys are done. That's again, Burt's Pit Road from Clement Street to Forest Glen Drive. 
Um, it's about 9,054 uh, feet long by roughly 30 feet wide. Um, we're, we're estimating that the, again, very rough estimates, don't have surveys, don't have design work, um, that just the reclamation costs alone, just the paving costs alone, uh, will be in excess of a million dollars uh, just to do the paving. We also anticipate that there will be significant uh, drainage and stormwater work that will have to happen as a result of that road. There are six culvert crossings uh, and that will need uh, uh, evaluation and possible uh, replacement. Um, and there are other stormwater improvement, uh, improvements that will need to be evaluated, such as increasing the existing drainage capacity. Um, there are some sections of the roadway that don't have any formal drainage that we're going to have to take a look at. Um, to either replace, um, and then there are some main drains that already exist there that we may have to either replace or extend. Again, that part of the project could be in the you know hundreds of thousands. Um, and it's interesting because we just had this whole um, this whole conversation about you know Houston and um, and development and wetlands and you know uh, when when less and less. Uh, you know, when there's less and less pervious surface, the impacts are, of course, on drainage. So probably the last time Burt's Pit Road was done, um, many of the developments that are now along uh, Burt's Pit Road from, you know, uh, Emerson Way uh, to Cardinal Way to, I mean, there's uh, Platinum Circle, probably a number of those uh, developments didn't exist. So now it's been developed. And so what we find both on Burt's Pit Road and we found it on Hinkley Street and we find it all around the city is our drainage systems that were built originally for those roads now need to be upgraded. Um, because again, there's been more development, uh, there's you know, more traffic, and, uh, and there's also you know, brooks and wetlands and other issues. So um, you know, it's when we saw what happened uh, in some other parts of the country where uh, there wasn't this attention paid to development and drainage and stormwater. Um, we see what happens. So this is kind of a smaller version of it, but it's one of the reasons why we're now having, when we go back and do all these roads like Day Avenue, like Hinkley Street, like Burt's Pit Road, um, we have to go back and replace all the drainage. The other one that was mentioned in the memo, uh, I know uh, the counselors to, to my left will be interested in this, was Hampton Avenue. Um, we also awarded a contract um, to be surveyed as part of the Burt's Pit Road survey. That's been awarded. It's a lot shorter street. It's about 977 feet long by 26 feet wide. Um, it's basically going to need a reclamation, which we estimate to be about $125,000. Again, part of the survey and design work will be looking at drainage improvements, water uh, main upgrades. There's also some pedestrian issues that we need to address on Hampton Avenue. Um, and, uh, and a mid-block crosswalk that, that I know TPC has been talking about as part of that project. So that'll happen um, as, we, um, as we do the survey and design work over the winter. Um, so that's what's happened in terms of this memo that I gave you at the beginning of the year and the funding that you approved. Um, and as we get to the end of the year, we'll now kind of, when the construction season ends, that is when the survey and design work will be done over the winter, and we hope that we'll be coming back to you um, next April uh, with a new iteration of this, um, and some of the things that we've started work on will, will be completed and will be part of the plan uh, for next year. So does that answer the questions you had about that? Yes, I appreciate that. Okay, excellent. Any other questions about the pavement? Uh, Councilor Bidwell sure. and Councilor Murphy. <coughs> uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was very, very helpful to go back to the original document and, and give us the update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 from time to time, get uh, uh, an inquiry. Um, you and I have spoken about this. Yes. Just what is the methodology for, for, for prioritizing among what would appear to be roads in similar need of, 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 of work? And I do my best uh, to provide what I, how I understand the, the system works and the, the, the rating system that's applied. But I've, uh, I've mentioned to the DPW director, and I think, I yep. think it may be somewhere between her shop and yours, uh, yep. sort of a plain English explanation of, 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 of how the decisions are made. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be uh, if, if as the plan for next year is rolled out. Definitely. If, it, uh, if we had that, uh, I think it would be most helpful. It's definitely, I know we've talked with you about it, it is something that we're trying to put into plain English so people can see it and have a, um, 
have a you know we there's a there's a pavement index and there's kind of a national scale right. for how you rank uh, right. pavement conditions that we use and we follow um, and then you kind of come up with a rating schedule but it's not as easy as okay those are the top five no I realize and I appreciate it then we also have to overlay onto that okay water uh, you know we need to replace a water main or we need to replace sewer or we need to replace drainage or you know so there's sort of like three different four different uh, overlays that have to happen um, and so that's sort of and then obviously trying to make sure that we balance you know Burt's Pit Road Hampton Avenue that we're doing them all in, in different parts of the city as well so but that is definitely uh, one of the things we're working on for the next uh, iteration of the pavement management plan is a way to really describe that to people so it doesn't feel like it's random um, as, as, as much as you can as much as you can describe that no, and I appreciate yeah. it it's complicated it's easy it's easy to say oh just a plain English dog the other I mean the other I mean obviously the other limiting factor is how much money we have so you know you may have a ton of roads like Hink you know you can really like Hinkley Street eats up a lot of your funding you know if we're only getting a million and a half from chapter 90 which has been pretty much where we've been at for the last seven eight nine ten years um, you know, we've been slowly increasing our contribution, which is actually many communities don't do that. And frankly, some communities, you know, like why are we paying gas taxes and sending all this money to Boston and not getting any of it back? But that's a larger conversation. But yeah, we are we are um, we are adding more money to try to catch up. But that's also the factor is that you may have projects, you may only have so much money to work with, so you may be plucking smaller roads just to fit under that cap of how much money you have in a given year. So that's another variable that we have to describe. And then there's just maintenance, like the crack ceiling, you know, which is, again, pretty much every year, it's $100,000, but that's a way to keep roads from getting further degraded and slipping further down the, the pavement scale. Um, by getting water into them. So point well taken and we'll try to, when we come forward next year, um, uh, we'll try to have a, a more descriptive way of describing that for people. Great, thank you. Yeah. Council Murphy, then Council <coughs> We did recently did a study of our sidewalks. Are yes. we developing a similar comprehensive plan for exactly. prioritizing and fixing our sidewalks? Exactly, and that's one of the ones that I mentioned, uh, that I mentioned that's still in progress. Um, they're they sent the data to somewhere like Wake Forest or some 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 place for anal analysis. We found that there were actually several sidewalks that were left out for some reason, um, and so they've come back to reevaluate those. There were a few gaps in what they had on their GIS mapping, so um, we're hoping to have that by the end of the year. That'll be a roadmap for us to then start whittling away at that that list of. Um, I mean, the good thing is you, when you do these things, you get a really good comprehensive list. The bad news is you have a really comprehensive <laughs> list and you, you understand how much <laughs> deferred maintenance you have. Um, and then it will be a balancing act of how do you, you know, how do you fund all these things. So, um, but that's, uh, that, that'll be hopefully part of the, the next capital improvement plan program. Thank you. Council Labarge. Uh, talking about the Yes. Mm -hmm. I would like to go with um, the director from the Department of Public Work, oh, maybe about three, four months ago, and talking with five residents. Mm -hmm. And Glendale Road has had drainage problems for a long time, mm -hmm. and it's serious out there. Yep. And hopefully that eventually will get on the list because it's been many, many years. And even now, residents, are when it rains it's all running down the road and it's all the way into halfway into their driveways that's yeah. how bad so when you're talking about doing roads over yeah this one is intense just like you were talking about yeah and again pretty much every road we do over if they haven't been done in 20 or 30 years drainage is going to be a big part of it because of increased development um and so uh so definitely drainage will be part of that road and many other roads um, that have to be looked at, whether it's Day Avenue, Hinkley, Burt's Pit, um, and Chesterfield will also have some drainage as well, so. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you for asking about it. And any, that, uh, any other questions for the mayor? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Um, next up, um, by the way, I should note that um, John's computer doesn't work, so there was no overhead presentation of the documents. Just so we're going old school tonight. <laughs> we're doing old school. Uh, next item is the consent agenda, which includes this is uh, item 17.365, which you recall we just had a hearing for. Resolutions? No. Oh. Jumping. Oh, boy, I passed right over that. I'm sorry. That was whoa. <laughs> My thumb flicked it up. Good point. I'm sorry. Next item is 17.406 is the resolution. And this is um, the <coughs> resolution opposing uh, the expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. And this would be a first reading. And uh, in. Let's see, upon the recommendation of Councilor Bidwell, Councilor Gina Louise Shara, and Councilor Jim Nash. This is, um, whereas the Hadley-based Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School, or PVCICS, failed in February 2016 to obtain a charter amendment from the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education that would have permitted it to increase its maximum enrollment. And whereas PVCICS, has gone back to the board asking again for authorization to expand its maximum enrollment from 584 to 1,036 K through 12 students, an expansion request not supported by the evidence of unmet demand. And whereas the Northampton School Committee remains opposed to the expansion of, of PVCICS and will formally vote again on the matter at their October uh, 12, 2017 meeting. And whereas the Northampton City Council in September 2016 voted unanimously to approve a resolution that was opposing lifting the cap on the Commonwealth Charter Schools with a major factor in that decision <coughs> objection that in FY 2017 about $2.2 million net of reimbursements is being diverted from Northampton Public Schools to six nearby Commonwealth Charter Schools enrolling 190 students from Northampton. And whereas this impact on the budget of the, of the Northampton Public Schools is, is substantial representing almost 5% of the system's operating budget, funds that could otherwise be spent on priorities such as preschool expansion, providing French, Spanish instruction, and instrumental music in elementary schools, adding teachers, and adjustment counselors. And whereas the voters of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in November 2016 voted 62% to 38% to oppose a ballot measure that would have lifted the cap on Commonwealth charter schools, which would have paved the way for the creation of new charter schools. And whereas the voters of Northampton voted 72% to 28% to oppose uh, that ballot measure, with all of Hampshire County voting 74% to 26% to oppose the lifting of the charter school cap. And whereas the flawed funding program in place for reimbursing school districts for their payments to charter schools in place in 2016 remains unchanged and is underfunded, meaning that any time a new charter school seat in the region is taken by a Northampton resident, even more dollars will be drained from the budget of the Northampton public school system. And whereas the inequities of charter school funding system create unnecessary tension and disunity in the communities across the Commonwealth, and whereas Northampton public schools, uh, the Northampton public school department is paying $669,000 in FY 2017 for 56 Northampton students attending PVCICS, and whereas these numbers will likely increase if the requested PVCICS expansion uh, were granted by the State Board, and whereas a broad range of organizations, including the New England chapter of the NAACP, Jobs with Justice, Massachusetts AFL-CIO, Citizens for Public Schools, Massachusetts Teachers Association, the American Federation of Teachers of Massachusetts, and Northampton CRR Schools are all in opposition to expanding the number of charter school seats in the Commonwealth. Now there, <laughs> now therefore, be it resolved that the City Council, the Northampton City Council joins with the Northampton School Committee and Mayor David Narkowitz in calling on the Commonwealth's Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to reject the proposed expansion of enrollment at the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School and be it further resolved that the City Council President is authorized to submit a letter to the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education and to speak with the Board Chair Expressing, expressing this body's strong opposition to expansion of the PVCIS, CICS, I'm sorry, as well as this body's opposition to the addition of any new charter school seats until the charter school funding formula is fundamentally reformed. And be it further resolved that Northampton representatives in the state legislature are encouraged to redouble their efforts to achieve fundamental reforms, 
leading to more equitable and expanded funding of the Commonwealth's public schools. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. second motion's made and seconded. Uh, would the author like to speak to this? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I'll start by thanking Councillors Nash and Shara for for uh, co-sponsoring and helping with the, with the drafting of this. And I'll thank uh, the school superintendent and school committee member Rebecca Bizanski for their work on this too. Um, by intro, let me just s make it clear what this resolution is about and what it's not. It's not about the merits of, of charter schools, uh, charter schools generally or this specific charter school. That's another conversation for another day. This is purely about the way they're funded and how they are funded uh, to the enormous detriment of our, of our own school system. And by way of background, the, the, chart, the, the PVCICS, um, as, as was mentioned, is licensed currently for 584 students. They have around 500 now. They claim they'll hit their max in a few years. Um, but, the, and, but the real issue is that they're asking to expand to over, over 1,000. The school board originally said no, and uh, much of the reason for the, for the state board uh, winding up denying uh, over the objections of their own chair was the opinion the, of, of surrounding communities that weighed in, um, communities like ours. So they're at it again. They, 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 they are able to, every six months or so, go back, uh, no matter how, they were, how it was found before. So what this is really about, as far as I'm concerned, as I said, is not the merits of charter schools, but the financial impacts on our own school system. Um, the, the, the funding system in, in place that funds charter schools, even when it's fully funded, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense and is flawed, but it's not fully funded. And so what it means is that in the current year, 190 students, more or less, are Northampton students, are going to charter schools, and we pay out about $2.5 million. The tuitions follow the students to those schools. We do get some reimbursement from the state, only a little over $300,000 coming back from the state. So the net outflow in the way charter schools works for our budget is going out to the tune of about $2.2 .2 million. And if this charter school were allowed to expand, one can only suspect that over time there would be more students going there. And every student that leaves the Northampton schools for a charter school takes with them ballpark 12000 bucks as a direct hit. Uh, to, to, our, to our own already strained school budget. So what this resolution would do would put us on record as being against this specific expansion. Um, and as the resolution notes, uh, opposition to the way schools are funded would appear to be heavily supported by our own community based on the way we voted on question, was it question four, the ballot measure, question four last, uh, last November. And indeed, this body voted uh, uh, to uh, oppose that ballot measure. So it's consistent with our track record, which is based on sound reasoning, I believe, uh, to join with the school committee, to join the mayor in, uh, in asking that the state board uh, not grant this, uh, this request to expand the capacity of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. Um, this session feels a little bit like Groundhog's Day. We, um, as we know, a little more than a year ago, we, the council passed a resolution against raising the statewide cap on new or expanded charter schools. Then as a state, we voted against raising it. Then six months ago, as Councillor Bidwell said, the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education voted against a charter amendment to expand this charter school, something that hadn't been done since 2011. Um, so I don't, I don't really see what has changed in the last six months. Uh, there's wide agreement that the funding structure in the Commonwealth for Charter Schools is flawed. Um, additionally, as Councillor Bidwell said, the state um, charter reimbursement is not fully funded and doesn't seem like it's going to be in the future. So it makes no sense to expand a system that is so incredibly broken. Um, and that's why, again, less than a year ago, voters in the Commonwealth, Hampshire County, and here in Northampton voted overwhelmingly not to expand it, uh, despite extraordinary efforts made by the proponents of lifting the cap. 
Um, <clears throat> so again, like Councilor Bidwell said, this is not about individual choice um, or people's decisions about their own families. I don't begrudge anyone that. This is about quite the opposite. This is about all of us, the collective, and about fixing a system that affects us all. Um, we, as the council, have an important responsibility to the budget of the city, and the largest portion of the budget goes to our education system, and that budget is deeply impacted by this flawed system. Um, it's our responsibility to speak out about it, and I thank Councilor Bidwell, again, for leading us in doing that, and uh, also Councilor Nash for joining. So, yeah. Councilor Nash. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm not gonna wing this. Um, <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank my colleagues and co-sponsors, Councilor Shiara and Bidwell. It has been a pleasure to work with them on this resolution. I especially want to thank Councilor Bidwell for spearheading this effort and pulling this resolution together. Our discussion developing this document was thoughtful, uh, respectful, and worked towards the, the goal of common ground. I want to thank them for that. And I want to ask my fellow counselors to unanimously support this resolution tonight. Um, to my knowledge, I am the first charter school parent to sit on Northampton City Council. I say to my knowledge as many charter school parents tend to keep their heads down around this very personal decision. However, I think I am safe in making this claim. My children attended both Hilltown and PVPA. Their experiences were rich and rewarding. Dora, Dora and I value that our children had this opportunity. That said, I can also attest that we continuously weighed the impact of our decisions, both in terms of our children's education and the impact on our community. For 25 years, our education system in the Commonwealth has been hobbled by the Massachusetts Charter School Law. It is a law that is designed to create hard feelings and discord. It will not bring us together. It will not build community. It takes from many. It creates inequities. It underfunds everyone. It pits people against one another. Ironically, few, ironically, um, <clears throat> nobody knows this better than charter school parents. I have heard them say, say it on the sidelines of youth sports events and at family gatherings. Charter school parents understand that this law is unfair to their local communities and it tears them up that their decisions as parents so impacts their community. Last fall I attended a discussion at UMass sponsored by the Gazette to debate the proposed ballot initiative to cap the expansion of charter schools at, at the university uh, in, in Massachusetts. We can all repeat the familiar arguments, but what stood out most for me was there was a young charter school parent from Boston who joined the panel to simply speak enthusiastically about her school and the success of her children. By the end, she was in tears. To bystanders afterward, she stated, I am not stealing. A decade back, Mayor Higgins stated that we should not think badly of parents doing what they feel is best for their children. The problem is the law. That is where my colleagues and I have found common ground to co-sponsor this resolution. As a charter school parent, I am sponsoring this resol resolution and asking the Commonwealth to honor the overwhelming, overwhelming expression of the voters last fall to cap the expansion of all charter schools allowing the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School to expand at this time would ignore the will of voters and only bring more hardship to surrounding communities. I also sponsor this resolution in the hope that we can begin to change our dialogue around charter schools and look beyond the cap. We need to stop pitting parents against parents, schools against schools. The status quo of the cap is not enough. We need a new law, a new funding formula, we need more equitable and expanded funding, and we need to include charter school parents in the conversation. Thank you for considering my thoughts, and I ask that my fellow counselors support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? Councilor LaBarge. Yes, um, Councilor Nash, I wanna thank you 
for the report that you just read off. I'm very honored of the language that you have come forth with. And I am going to support this resolution. I supported what we did in, in the year of 216, and I will support this. And there is, there is a serious, serious funding problem. And we need a new law. I agree with all this. And I also want to thank all the sponsors for working on the language on this resolution. Uh, I, I would, I would, I would just add how much I appreciate Councilor Nash's comments. It's, 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 it's a, a and a, the difficulty and the complexity of this issue for a for a, a, a proud charter school parent. So I appreciate the agonizing and the thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wonder if uh, we, we our resolution asks that our council president actually forward the spirit of the resolution. I wondered if you might putting you on the spot here a little bit, if you might consider forwarding your own remarks to the state school board. Sure. Yeah. The, uh, actually, Councilor Bidwell stole my thunder. I was going to ask you if uh, <laughs> we can, given the fact that I've been signed up to testify, apparently. And to, and to visit, <laughs> yes, to, exactly. to drive in and visit personally. And <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I, I do know that the language has me testifying in hearings and scheduling me and stuff like that. Um, and and I also wanted, I, you, your comments are brave and really crystallize mm -hmm. the conflict. And actually, the beauty of it is it, 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 and in fact, actually, I've always heard it represented on this floor and in, in this chamber when the discussion has come up, is was a concern that it, it was always emphasized that no one, none of this included a judgment about parents who sent their children to charter school. But there was, that was always, there was always this sense, as you said, and then, and in fact, unfortunately, every time we had a discussion about this on either side, it started with, you don't like me, you don't like my school, and you don't like my school choice, or you don't like, you know, you hate our schools, and so on and so forth. And it was very difficult to get past that to discuss the commonality that you so succinctly put, which was the struggle <coughs> It was almost by design, actually. Unfortunately, when the charter laws were created, it was designed, it was one to level the playing field, to create competition that would inspire greatness in all public schools. It didn't level the playing field, it canted it hard to one side and created the, the, the resentments that you describe. And, and, and I know, you and I have discussed this as well, and that it's, it's a deeply personal issue. You don't get more personal in talking about how your children are schooled. It doesn't get more personal than that. So obviously the emotions, unfortunately, were the ones that bubbled to the top and the more serious discussion about the, the intrinsic flaws that are built into the structure of the, of the formula, which has been the frustrating throughout. And I think pro and, uh, you know, uh, pro and con, or people who have children in charter school versus people who do not, it, it, it's almost as if this agitation were an intended byproduct of the legislation. We now actually have on the federal level, we have um, Secretary of Education who is sort of exacerbating this argument and, and bringing, making it more sharp and more contentious. And that's unfortunate. And I think, to Councilor Bidwell's point, your remarks actually stabilize the discussion, make it approachable and accessible. So if I'm ever forced to testify, I'm just going to read the comments. And, uh, and, and the letter that I'm going to forward will hopefully include your remarks. So. More than welcome. OK. Anyone else? Um, can I, I have a couple of Scriveners. Um, yep. So in the B, it further resolved. There's should be an S after the apostrophe. Oh, you you were doing uh, yeah. There were a couple other things. There's a and the and there was a agreement. There was there was an agreement. There was uh, there was also uh, a past tense. I think it was a, the word opposed when it should have. 
Oh boy. So where, where's your Scribner's? Um, second from last paragraph, as well as this body apostrophe. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and then there was one that you got cut. So whereas, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six up from the bottom, whereas Northampton Public Schools are paying or the Northampton Public School Department is paying? Right, got it. Yeah. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. Damn, there's a lot of whereases. Uh, six, seven. Whereas the voters of Northampton voted 72 to 28 percent to oppose that yeah. ballot matter. Yeah. It would be to oppose. Anyone else notice any other script? These are Scribner errors. These do not change the body of the resolution, but. Yeah, they're careful readers. Good for you. Oh, um, paragraph below that one, there are two that. So, whereas the flawed funding program, um, next line, meaning that any time, not that, that. Yep. Meaning that, yes, yep. delete one that. One's enough. And while we're at it, <coughs> wait, uh, well, there's more. There, wait, there's more. In that same paragraph that Councilor Sharp was just referring to, whereas the flood funding program strike in place, because the in place comes later in that sentence, too. So You didn't want to be redundant. <coughs> exactly. So if you could, um, you Councilor Bidwell, if you would, the Scribner's errors, I if you could do forward that to uh, John so that he can I have would, a. I would be happy to do so. So, to the resolution, um, any other discussion? Um, what's the preference here, roll call or voice vote? Yeah. Roll call. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Shaw. Yes. All right, that passes unanimously in first reading. Uh, next up, the consent agenda, and, it's in, and the items, and it's a chunky one, so I'm going to read them quickly. Uh, the first item is 17.365, to approve all petition for National Grid on Woodmont Road. Also, item 17.407, appointments to various committees. Uh, this is to refer to the Committee on City Services. Um, okay, and then... Uh, I uh, then approve the minutes of September 21st, 2017. And then also item 17.385 is appointments to the Whiting uh, Street Fund Committee returned uh, by the Committee on City Services on October 7, 2nd, 2017. Um, the committee recommendations are not available at the time of the agenda publication. And the chair just stepped out, so hopefully before we get to that, uh, we'll find out what those were. Uh, we have uh, Joseph Mesterko, 312 Chesterfield Road in Leeds. It's a term to run from July 2017 to June 2020. Uh, also, Andrea Murray of 54 Day Avenue in Northampton, the, the term to run from July 2017 to June 2020. Michael Shaughnessy of 575 uh, Bridge Road, 11-5. Uh, that's in Florence, term to begin July 2017, expiring June 2020. Michael Quinlan of 712 Bridge Road in Florence, the term starting July 2017, expiring June 2019. Marilyn Richards of 20 Bridge Road, number 8 in Florence, the term to start July 2017, expire June 2018. Also, we have uh, item 17.395, this appointments to various committees returned by the Committee on City Services. Again, uh, without the recommendation yet, so we'll find that out soon. But we have Casey Fowler, 91 West Hampton Road in Florence. This is a term to start September 2017, expiring June 2020. This is uh, filling the vacancy. And then transportation and parking. Benjamin Albro Fisher of 50 Ma uh, Manhattan Street in Northampton, term to start June 2017, expiring June 2020. This is a reappointment. The Arts Council, Alan Schneider of 231 Main Street in Leeds, term to start September 2017, expiring June 2020. 
Um, actually, so members of the body, do you recall what the recommendations were? Did these all proceed with a positive recommendation? Yes, yes they, 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 they do. Is that your recollection as well? Yes. Okay. Ask for removal, Mr. President. Yes, what would you like to pull? Um, Michael Shaughnessy. All right, so Michael Shaughnessy, we'll, we'll move that from the consent agenda and leave that, and we'll come back to that after we vote on the consent agenda. <laughs> oh. Okay. Move to approve the consent agenda. Motion's made to approve. Second. And seconded. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So Michael Shaughnessy, 575 Bridge Road. This is an appointment to the Whiting Street Fund Committee. Um, first of all, accept a motion. Move his approval. Second. Okay. I would just like to abstain. It's probably not necessary, but he's my campaign treasurer. I don't think there's a real financial conflict, but just out of an abundance of caution, I'll abstain. I, I, I appreciate the gesture, so. Uh, any other discussion on Mr. Shaughnessy's appointment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. One abstention. Okay. So now we slip into recess, a gentle recess into the Committee on Finance, which will be chaired by Councilor Murphy. It's actually a beefy one, and you have the gavel, sir. We'll move right along. Uh, John, would you call the roll to finance, please? Uh, Councilor Murphy. I'm here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Navarro. Present. Councilor Nash. Here. Excellent. We're all here. So the first item of business is to approve the minutes of September 21st, 2017. We have a motion. We got a motion. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the first thing we have, uh, again, upon the recommendation of the mayor, as all of these are, it's 17.400, an order to establish a revolving fund for the survival center. Order that uh, the city hereby establishes a revolving fund under Mass General Law 40, Section 3, for the deposit of proceeds from the rental and lease of the survival center property on Prospect Street, starting in fiscal year 2018, which be began on July 1, 17. And the city hereby accepts the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 3, which allows any balance remaining in the survival center revolving fund to be carried over in the revolving fund at the end of each fiscal year and allows the expenditure of funds for the upkeep and maintenance of the survival center under the direction of the director of central services starting in fiscal year 2018 and the whereas the current fund balance in the survival center receipt reserved account shall be transferred to the revolving fund established here under and upon such transfer the receipt reserved account shall be abolished do we have a motion to finance make a motion second second and the mayor's here for questions I can explain it in three words. Municipal Modernization Act. So this is a, a, another in a series of tweaks in the, you know, thousands of little minutiae in the Municipal Modernization Act, whereby basically under old accounting uh, principles, there were these rental funds um, that were in various types of different funds. And so now under the new Municipal Modernization Act, DOR wants them in revolving funds. Mm -hmm. So we're basically, um, you know, places where we had rental in receipts reserved, we're basically asking you to transfer them. You'll see another one later in your agenda, same thing. So we're basically not any change to the amounts or the dollar, we're just putting it in the right type of fund. And the purpose remains the same. Exactly. To maintain the facility that the survival center rents from us. Exactly. Yes. And that those funds are used to make any repairs to the to the structure as the landlord. Any questions for the mayor on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. Uh, this is seventeen dot four oh one in order to provide funds for extraordinary maintenance at the Northampton Public Schools ground maintenance shop, which is actually in the same place, I think. City Council appropriates $11,000 uh, from gift fund 2547-265 Prospect Street gift funds for the purpose of providing funds for extraordinary maintenance needed at the Northampton Public Schools grounds maintenance shop located at 265 Prospect Street. Such funds shall be used for repairs to the building's roof. Do we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay, and the mayor's here for this. 
This is, uh, this is a um, separate fund related to Prospect Street. It actually is a gift fund. It's not a, rent, a rental fund. Um, and it's funds that were set aside to basically take care of um, maintenance related to the non-survival center part, part of, of the building. building, which is primarily the grounds uh, shop for the NPS. Um, you may recall last year we had to do work on a furnace there. Um, now they have a leaky roof. Um, so we're asking to use some of the funds to secure the roof before the winter. Um, I was going to ask, we just, I just found out from uh, Tony Kisneris, who's the uh, maintenance folk person at the schools, that the roofer has indicated that they have an opening in their schedule and can actually start on it early next week. Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to ask, we didn't know this, but I was going to ask if we could get two readings on this tonight so we could take advantage of you know, a contractor who's available <laughs> now, um, and we don't know when he will be again. So um, that's, I would request when you go to the meeting if we could get two readings. Again, it's money that's in a gift fund. We're just asking to use it um, on the intended purpose for the gift fund. No. And, and I can concur. I'm trying to do it now, too. So yes. if you can get them. The window is closing take, on yeah, roofers, take, yes. Uh, any questions for the mayor? Mm. Hearing none, uh, all in favor of a aye. positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, the next one is 17.403 in order to authorize acceptance of a gift uh, for the Hampshire Hope Remembrance Quilt. Order that the City of Northampton gratefully accepts a donation of $1,500 from Florence Savings Bank to the Health Department for Hampshire Hope Remembrance Quilt to be made from the pictures of loved ones who have passed from opiate addiction or who are in recovery and approves use of the funds from the gift fund, this fund number 2523, to pay for the quilt to be made and displayed at future Hampshire Hope events in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, any updates on this one? Just that you know, we had a wonderful um, Hampshire Hope uh, Night of Remembrance event at Union Station earlier this year where family members who lost loved ones to the opioid crisis came and brought photographs and um, uh, Meredith O'Leary and Cherry Sullivan mentioned that one of the things they were going to try to do was make them into sort of a quilt. Um, and the president of Florence Bank stood up during, during his remarks and said, because they had been a sponsor and said, you know, we're a sponsor and we also want to help pay for that quilt. So we will, we will take them up that. on it. Yeah. Yes. So this is a gift that they've put forward of $1,500 to help pay for those expenses. So again, we want to gratefully accept that. Um, on behalf of the health department mm -hmm. and the Hampshire Hope. Any questions for the mayor on this one? No. Oh, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, I think you might have missed item 7402. Is it zip right by something? That's, 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 that's another revolving. Oh, the James house. house. Unless yeah. I got stuck together here. My goodness, there's the James house. They need money too. All right, uh, backing up to 17402. Uh, this is to establish the same kind of revolving fund um, for the James House property um, that we've already done one of. Uh, again, 17402, order that the city hereby establishes a revolving fund under Mass General Law 40, Section 3 for the deposit of proceeds from the rental and lease of the James House property on Gothic Street uh, starting in fiscal year 2018, which began July 1, 17. Uh, hereby, the city hereby accepts the provisions of Mass General Law 40, Section 3, which is allows any balance remaining in the James House property revolving fund to be carried over in the revolving fund at the end of each fiscal year and allows the expenditure of funds for the upkeep and maintenance of the James House under the direction of the Director of Central Services starting in fiscal year 2018. We have a motion on that one? Make a motion. Second. Second. Um, same thing. Any same questions exact from the mayor on this one? The other. Same. All right. Um, hearing no questions, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The next is 17404, and this is upon the recommendation of the Community Pre Preservation Committee, and this is to appropriate funds for community preservation purposes. And if everyone remembers, um, there, there are certain uh, community activities that are eligible for funding. So what we do is we take their, their balance and we split it amongst the various funds and then they spend that money uh, for each of those purposes and as I read them off you'll you know you'll probably remember what those purposes are um, 
So order that the following amounts be appropriated or reserved from the fiscal year 2018 Community Preservation Fund estimated revenues of $1,494,000. Um, so the $1,157,000 thousand is the FY local assessment estimate and they would add a two hundred seventy five thousand dollar state match to that that's where it comes from so one hundred and sixty four thousand from the FY total estimated CPA revenue would go to the community preservation fund for open space okay. one hundred and sixty four thousand from the FY total estimated CPA revenue a re reserve would go to the community preservation fund for historic preservation 164,000 from the FY18 total estimated CPA revenue uh, to the Community Preservation Fund for affordable housing, 65,000 from the FY18 total estimated CPA revenue to the Community Preservation Administrative Account, and 937,000 from the FY18 total estimated CPA reserve, uh, revenue reserve to the Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserve that would then remain eligible to be spent in, in any of those areas. Also, the following accounts to be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserve for FY18 Community Preservation bonding payments. These are payments being made from this money on projects that have, are, are ongoing and where money has been borrowed. Um, $65,000 for principal and $13,775 for interest for the Bean Farm Bond. 95,000 for principal and 31,250 for interest for Florence Fields bond. 265,000 for principal and 26,500 for interest um, for the Pulaski Park number one bond and 67,500 for principal and 21,000 four dollars and 17 cents for interest for the Pulaski Park number two bond. So and that um, that I'm assuming adds up to the total amount. Yes. So, and the other reason we have to do this is because um, when Susan Wright has to submit the recap to the state of our FY18 budget, account for the money. they won't set the tax rate unless they see that our FY18 budget is all properly aligned and this and, money is And distributed to the account. So once this gets approved, she'll be filling out a form and finishing up all of her work to send it off to DOR. So that's we the can other. And then send our tax rate in the near future. Yes. All right, do we have a motion on this in finance? I make a motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion on these? Councillor uh, O'Donnell. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, is there a balance in the housing reserve fund, the CPA housing reserve fund for affordable housing? I'm looking at the CPA uh, administrator uh, sitting a few <laughs> feet away. As I recall, we used it up uh, in the spring. So it's back to We've zero. zeroed it out? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. Yep. Sometimes housing, sometimes there's not always a housing project brought mm -hmm. forward but we used it up this past spring. Yeah, between the uh, the HAP project and the, the Lumberyard project, yeah. that probably right. got a lot of funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, John. Any, any other questions on this one question. from the mayor? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, any other questions at all on this? Then in, in finance, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And then the last thing is something that are going to make people very happy for the holiday season. This is 17405. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz, uh, this is in order to suspend the collection of parking fees for certain days in November and December of 2017. Order that on the following days, collection of fees for on-street and off-street parking spaces, excluding the garage. Um, they'll be suspended Friday, November 24th. Um, infamously known as back Black Friday, uh, Saturday, November 25th, Small Business Saturday, and Saturday, December 23rd, uh, which is the day before Christmas Eve. And as uh, Councilor Carney pointed out, the 24th is a Sunday, so we wouldn't be collecting fees anyway. So this is essentially the first night is a Sunday this year, so we don't have to. You don't have to worry about first night. Yeah. Change for first night. So it would be November 24th, Black Friday. November 25th, which is Small Business Saturday, and December 23rd, which is the last day before Christmas we would be charging anyway to let people come do their Christmas shopping. So do we have a motion to finance? Second. Okay. Mr. Mayor, any questions for the mayor? A quick question. Um, so this includes the on-street parking downtown? Yes. 
So it's just okay. All right. Yes. It's, I mean, in years past, we we kind of mix it up a little. Yeah, I know. During first night, there was confusion because we often only did the lots. We didn't do Main Street because we were trying to make sure that businesses could still, you know, have have customers get to their stores on on. But um, because it falls on a Sunday this year, it's not really in play. But yeah, this is for everything except the garage. The garage, because of the way the garage functions, we can't. That one has to remain. Uh, but there will be a guaranteed parking space if you go to the garage, probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably. There's always there's always plenty of uh, inexpensive parking in the garage. We like to say so. Yeah. It's the least expensive garage in North America. <laughs> <laughs> Bargain every so, Yes. Uh, oh, I have had a question. Do you have an estimate of just just what the foregone revenue is from this? Um, I don't. Um, we could certainly run some numbers on it. This is something we, um, in, in years past, there were actually longer periods of free parking, and then we sort of did away with that. Um, and then we were sort of always doing the first night. And so last year, I think for the first time, we decided to do try to acknowledge the Small Business Saturday, which is now kind of a, a national uh, celebration, and then, you know, the Black Friday thing which I don't know if that's a real thing or not but um, just to acknowledge the highest volume shopping days so right. yeah um, but we can I can try to get you some estimates at least on the years when we haven't when we have charged for parking well, I think it'd be worth note it'll, it'll never show up in in our audit as such but in fact it's a it's a way the city is investing in the vitality of downtown mm -hmm. um, it'd be worth quantifying mm -hmm. Councilor Donald but <clears throat> just for the record, parking revenue is not general fund <coughs> revenue. It supports sure. the parking system. True. So that is true. It's not like we're removing revenue from other services exactly. in the city right. or anything yeah. like that. So You're important right. point. I mean, it is revenue that does support some general fund activities like police and DPW downtown. But for the most part, it's going, back, an access to, going yeah. back into the parking yeah. system. Yeah. yeah. So. So. Uh, but I can I can try to look at what um, what some of those days may have yielded in the in past years. Just so, yeah, but it's going to be somewhat skewed by the fact that we've raised parking rates since then. But we can try to figure that out. So, any other questions for the mayor on this one, yeah. Councilor Labarge? Mayor, Saturday, November twenty fifth. When is the parade in Florence? The Christmas parade. That's in um, that's typically the day after Thanksgiving. Um, so uh, that's usually um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, right? I think that's. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's that same day. Yeah. Okay, I so. And I, I'm declaring free parking in all of Florence that okay. day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Actually, there's free Florence parking every day in Florence. But, um, so, Not yes. Leeds. What about Leeds? What's that? <laughs> and Leeds, exactly. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, but that is the day of the parade. Yes, Thank it you. also happens to just this year again. By the way, the calendar falls. It's also Small Business Saturday. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um. so we good with uh, questions on the days we're not charging for parking? Then all of those. And, and I just one, um, and then one question is like I, I know this is on finance. I wasn't sure if it needed to be referred to TPC. That was the only other question. Um, I don't know. I don't think it needs to be. Yeah, it's right. really just a suspension of an ordinance for three days, basically. I would defer to the council on that. I have okay. a strong opinion. Every All time right. it has come, it's been resoundingly approved. Yeah, so I, that's why we introduced it now, because we didn't know if it had to make its way mm -hmm. to TPC and come back before. But I, anyway, I just wanted to raise that. That's why we were bringing it forward in October. Yeah. Oh, so, thank you. yeah. Very good. No more questions? So no, we just keep ahead. This was a very highly questioned. Uh, <laughs> so all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, so unless there's any other business for finance, uh, motion motion motion. Motion. thank you. Take a motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Take it away. Thank you all very much. So uh, we've got a recess, and we're going to come right back to those very same financial orders in order. So first up is item 17.400. It's an order to establish a revolving fund under the direction of the Director of Essential Services for the Survival Center. First reading. Move to approve. Second. 
Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please, John. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Shaw. Yes. Councillor Dilla. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. We'll be revisited at our next meeting. Item 17.401, this is in order to provide funds for extraordinary maintenance at Northampton Public School Grounds Maintenance Shop. And there's a request for two readings on this one. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sharp. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. That passes in first reading. Move to suspend, suspend, suspend rules. rules. <laughs> motions made to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Uh, motion second. Second motion. <laughs> Split the difference. <laughs> um, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules to allow for a second reading, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Second reading. Second. Motions made and seconded uh, for a second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call on this, please, John. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor. Yes. Uh, yes. Councillor Shaw. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. All right, that passes in second. Item 17.402, this is an order to establish a revolving fund under the direction of the Director of Central Services for the James House property, first reading. Second it. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shaw. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. All right, that passes in first reading and will be reviewed again. For another vote at our next meeting. Item 17.403 is in order to authorize acceptance of $1,500 for the Hampshire Hope Remembrance Move Quilt. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sharon. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. All right. Passes in first reading. Item 17.404 is in order to appropriate funds for the community preservation purposes. First reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussions on this point? on the allocations and the dispersal and distribution. Not dispersal yet. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Shaw. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. Item 17.405 is in order to suspend the collection of parking fees for certain days in November and December 2017. Move to approve. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? This is pretty well vetted. Okay. <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sharp. Yes. That passes in first reading. Item 17.392 um, this is in order to authorize reprogramming of funds to the fire station project. This is a second reading. Second. Move to approve. Second. Motion to me in second. Councilor Labarge and Councilor McDonald. Any discussion? All set. Roll. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shar. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Okay, that is approved in second reading. Item 17.393, this is in order to appropriate funds to pay for carpeting at the fire station. This is also a second. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Questions? Roll call, please. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. No, I'm sorry. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shar. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Kern. Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Mm -hmm. Item 17.394 is an order to authorize payment of a prior year bill. Second Take reading. Move. move approval. Motion's made. Was there a second? Oh, you got one? Oh, okay. I seconded. Okay. Discussion? No, I did something. Roll call. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. 
Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Joy? Yes. Now we're into orders. And the first order up is 17.391. This is an order of taking to authorize a taking by eminent domain a parcel of property identified on assessor's map 32C parcel uh, 348. And this is second reading. Move to approve. Motion's made and seconded. Further discussion on this taking? Council or not? Um, what was the planning board's? Could we um, review the planning department's response about our request to? Yeah, let me see. Were they going to bring new language? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I believe it's a. If, it, if they did, then it's technically different than last time, if I'm not mistaken. Trying to see if it's one of the attached documents to the. Okay. <coughs> can't tell by the. <sighs> so you think th the eminent domain order is changed? Oh, I apologize. I jumped. I jumped you're, you're, a full one ahead. It's completely of okay. Photovoltaic. Yeah, that's what right, I said. I jumped. I jumped. Yeah, okay. Good, because you freaked me out there a little bit. Right. And Sorry about that. It's okay. Whew. So call the question. Okay. <laughs> so, call the, so we're back to the original order. Enthusiastically. <laughs> Any other discussion on this or alerts? Okay. Uh, roll call, please, John, on item 17.391. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Yes. That passes in second reading. Now up are the ordinances, item 17348. This is an ordinance to clarify parking lot design criteria when installing photovoltaic canopies over surface parking lots. And it's the first reading to continue from the previous meeting. There is a memo. Um, and I, I heard from Carolyn, she was not able to be here tonight. So Carolyn said that, but anyway, this is uh, Ray, the modifications to ordinance item 17.348, an ordinance to clarify parking lot design criteria when installing photovoltaic canopies over surface parking lots. The attached ordinance incorporates modified text requested by the council at its September 21st meeting. The amended text would provide flexibility to the planning board when, re when reviewing projects that include PV canopies over parking lots. This modified text was discussed at the planning board meeting on September 28th, and it was unanimously supported by the board. In reviewing the text, the board also debated whether an allowance for off-site tree planting would be appropriate. However, the board determined that such consideration would overly complicate the permit for prospective developers and felt that waivers from on-site provisions would adequately address their concerns. Is, was that what you were asking about that? I think so, so is it is it the president's understanding that we should move to substitute the language or? Do you yes, and they actually, let me see, I believe, let me see. Attached to the memo is the. Um, yeah, is the modified language. Yeah. Is modified language? Mm -hmm. So it now reads, in fact, I was, I was um, Make sure I've got the right amended version. Yes. Um, in and now insert surface parking lots with more than 75 parking space. The expanse of pavement shall be interrupted by uh, separating rows of parking spaces from each other and from driveways by using planting strips, which may also contain pedestrian uh, sidewalks at least six feet in width. Provision of these planting strips shall take into account the need to store snow, to locate light poles, to allow safe pedestrian movement, to maximize emergency access, uh, and to separate different traffic movements. In addition, if an existing parking lot is expanded to over 75 spaces, planting strips shall be required for an entire lot. All proposals to construct or modify such parking lots shall be reviewed by the planning board in light of the requirements of this section. New language. The calculation for determining whether planting strips are required does not apply to the portion uh, and number of parking spaces that are covered by one or more photovoltaic canopies. And also surface parking lots with over 15 parking spaces serving 
uses uh, use serving uses located in business industrial uh, business park or planned village districts must have at least one shade tree minimum two inch caliper for every 15 provided parking spaces and then the number of trees per 15 parking spaces required for all spaces that are not covered by photovoltaic canopies it's the new language it's not a substantive change but it is it that would warrant more hearings I don't think that's that's my conclusion it's not necessarily held by all but possibly but uh, actually, with the motion, is, uh, it, 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 yeah, we'll all accept the motion in a second on it, just uh, for purposes of discussion, at least. I'll, I'll move it as amended. Okay. Second. Is there a second? Okay. So, further discussion on this item? Councilor Donald, did that adequately address the, your thoughts and concerns on this, or the? I think the new language might be slightly different. I'm not sure if you. Or it could Jonah be that could very, well, could very well be I'm confused again, but it will be, be I'm confused. Track as well. record this meeting is Let me check. Might indicate so if you that, scroll past the memo, there's yes, yeah, it does say on the memo it, on the the new language, the new additional language. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Is the planning board may waive planting strips if it, it deems appropriate uh, if it deems appropriate only for the portion and number of parking spaces that are covered by one or more photovoltaic canopies, and also. The number of trees per 15 parking spaces, but, but, but wait a minute, let me see if that's any different. Okay. Uh, the number of trees per 15 parking spaces shall be tabulated for all spaces unless the planning board finds that for spaces covered by photovoltaic canopies, there is no adequate location on site to meet the requirement for those covered spaces. So that does. So that's why I take Councillor Murphy's motion to. Yeah, to okay. amend with that language is fine. Yeah, and for the record, this was the irresistible force versus the immovable object, which is trees versus solar panels right. in Northampton. And this was the same ordinance, but it gives, under extraordinary circumstances, the planning board has some flexibility, but still it essentially accomplishes the same thing. So. Okay. Exactly. So I, thank you. This was, this was inevitable at some point that these... That's these, these two these aspirational clash. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the come the same conflict, <laughs> and that, and then we lay it at the feet of the planning board. So we kick it down that road. So any further discussion on this item? Okay. As amended, uh, roll call, please. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. That passes in first reading, and we will revisit it <coughs> at our next meeting. Um, also continued from the previous meeting is item 17.349. That's an ordinance to allow small-scale ground-mounted photovoltaic arrays in uh, the floodplain. And uh, let's see if there's any. Um, This, now, the, as I recall, the discussion on this one was actually the, the particularly the issue that required to be 100 feet from a service pole, mm -hmm. and the discussion was to allow if if the installer were able to uh, provide uh, uh, electrical access to the pole. So the uh, essentially the language that we were hoping would be modified would to suggest that. It would not require the installation of a new pole, but beyond that, we weren't going to specify 100 feet or otherwise. Is that everyone's memory on this? Yeah. That correspond roughly with what I, I think that was discussed. I'm not sure that a resolution was was found. I thought there was going to be some administrative thinking about it before this meeting. Um, so I don't have. I'm not comfortable recommending specific language personally. <coughs> Maybe others are, but and we didn't get anything back from planning on this. Right, there's no, right. Memo, this no modified with any amended language. language, so they just left it. So it is as it was when it left here without modification. Yeah. Of, of course, so. there is second reading also. If, if in fact, it goes second forward reading. tonight. <coughs> yeah, the two, yeah, the two questions were the poll question, yeah. and I think it said eight, and the category of small solar goes up to ten. So, uh -huh. as uh -huh. I recall, that wasn't going to, we we're going to let it be keep it at eight or let it go to 10, and then if it didn't require a pole, could it be further than 100 feet is my recollection. 
but I don't. We know. I don't think planning. They we did, spotted yeah. the one. They didn't respond to the yeah, other. We did uh, make uh, recommendations, and, the, and yeah. it seems that they. Were, and in the absence of having Carolyn, if I were to characterize the the sense of it seems like the planning department and board and the community want this to go forward, but I'd say if there are other, if there's more feedback from the community, then it should come before two weeks from now, <laughs> because then it will become law uh, after right. the mayor signs Unless it. Unless it's defeated in the second. Unless it's defeated, yeah. yes. Council LaBarge. Yes, um, if I can recall, I think we had a resident who's here tonight who apparently was over just a little bit of that 100 feet so right the the particular concern of course is we don't make law for individuals who make i understand law. So, that so but we heard that concern right. we did hear that concern and and wayne is actually here tonight but the i think um first of all I'll accept a motion to discuss this further is there a motion? move to approve second a second okay um on this issue uh i think what Councilor O'Donnell is recommending and and i concur that we vote on this in first reading presuming that it survives the first reading that we have um until the next meeting to hear possible amendments coming from the planning office uh absent that then it's up to us to decide whether we're going to actually codify this so um so as i understand councilor o'donnell you're comfortable with moving uh passing in the first reading but i think it should be We'll and keep, it, keep the ball moving and yes. yeah. get planning to send us a memo next time. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully get some opinion. Hopefully <laughs> Carol will be able to attend and hopefully we'll be amended. <coughs> and, um, and in fact, actually got to send her a memo to that effect. I don't have an administrative assistant who I used to rely on. This, so I'm, I'm just flying in the dark here. I just got this guy here with no computer. He's <laughs> 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 so, yeah. just sort of winging it. Okay. So, <laughs> any further discussion on this item? Uh, roll call and first reading, please, John. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shaw. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Zabar. <coughs> yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Okay. All right. We're sure as hell going to be talking about that in our next meeting. So, um, on second reading, this is the one item that we actually did pass in first reading the last time. This is item 17.350. This is an ordinance to change the site plan section 350-11.6 uh, <coughs> to require new construction of a certain size to be solar ready. The second reading. Um, is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. So we got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please, John. Councilor Shaw. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Lavar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. No. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Okay. That passes in second reading. Item 17.353, this is an ordinance eliminating the requirement for a special permit when off-site parking spaces are required in lots away from educational facilities in which they serve. Second. Motion's made second. This is second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Lavar. Yes. yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Yes. All right. That passes in second reading. Our last item. <laughs> and Adele and Sharon are leaving. They stayed for the stayed penultimate. For okay. <laughs> stayed for solar. Um, Item 17.399, this is an ordinance pertaining to multi-use trails. This is to refer to uh, Transportation Parking Commission and the Committee on Legislative Matters. To refer. Second. Motion's made to refer and second. All those are. Um, can I make a note? Yes. Just, just for the, and whoever may be listening, this ordinance also has to do with, if I'm not mistaken, um, how do I describe this? Electrically assisted bicycles on right. trails. That's what they're calling. So there's a question of whether we will allow that in Northampton to accommodate different kinds of users. And peop some people have strong feelings about that. So just it's, for it's, everyone. It's a modification of the current policy, which doesn't allow any motorized vehicles on it, except for um, wheelchair. And this would allow low speed. Low speed electric assist bicycle. That's 
are part of the bike share. Mm -hmm. So, okay, thank you for that note. Uh, any further discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I have no updates for you. Uh, actually, I do. We it is likely we will have an administrative assistant, possibly by our next meeting. By when? I, I've, I've made this real qualified announcement all of a sudden I realize I'm not sure but we're, we've narrowed it down so it's a prospect that we may have one soon and I, I'm not prepared to tell you any more than that at this point but just to let you know it is in process and that um, uh, we may not have to impose on John who actually serves many capacities it was actually very helpful to have you here uh, for the CPC stuff and then and then also the taxis and then and, and <laughs> if we start talking about weights and measures we're gonna have to tap John anyway so um any information requests no new business nope. so that leaves me with move to adjourn second all, all those in favor of adjourning please say aye. Aye. aye aye thank you all very much